zeer voor dit uh, cadeautje. Um, we continue. Van, van dit naar de gevangenis staat hier, maar I'll continue in English. Um, but our next speaker is actually, in fact, uh, an expert in prisons. Uh, in pr and I can introduce him best by reading what he said in an interview with The Guardian when he stepped down as governor of the human ecological prison on the island of Basto near Oslo. He said, losing liberty is sufficient punishment. Once in custody, we should focus on reducing the risk that offenders pose to society after they leave prison. With this human approach, he succeeded to get the re-offending rate of former inmates to 16%, where 70% is generally measured in the rest of the Western world. To tell you all about his approach in prison with uh, people losing liberty, he is from Norway, Arne Kvernvik Nielsen. Thank you so much. What a tremendous, interesting day this has been, until now, at least. Um, <clears throat> I don't know why, but Norwegian politicians now, nowadays, particularly those who are in the government, each time they appear on the <clears throat> television screen, uh, they are going to, to speak about something, they say, first of all, I would say I'm very humble. Well, I, I, I don't know if I am very humble, I'm scared, absolutely scared about this. Uh, and um, secondly, I, I, I apologize because of my, my English is terrible. So uh, at least I hope you enjoy the photos. Um, <clears throat> and I, I think so far in this conference, I'm the only one who have brought some papers. I used to be a preacher once. I, I, my background is from the church ministry. And you know this kind of, of uh, religious people, uh, they, they read the verse from the Bible and say, this is the word of God, and then they continue to talk about something else. Um, but I, I need to stick to some here because I'm, I'm afraid of this, uh, this, this clock. Anyway, <clears throat> the, uh, let, me, let me say the, the pictures, uh, the photos you are, you are going to, to see here is all from Buster Prison in, in the Oslo Fjord. And uh, some of them are from another prison uh, where I'm working now uh, days as an advisor and trainer. It's an island down in the Danube Delta district, beautiful district in Romania where I've been invited by the Rom Romanian um, authorities to, to uh, try to help them, to support them, to change how they can change their way of running, establishing and running prisons. So this is what I'm trying to share with you um, this uh, afternoon. Um, uh, talking about lies, yes, uh, I think I, I lie a lot. I've tried to, stick to, to, to try to be honest this afternoon, but uh, we are all always influenced by lies. And, uh, by lies. and when, when, I, when I was uh, preaching, um, I, I, I do know that the religious people, still the religious man, uh, I think we have a particular need of lying because we like to say that well, I'm all right, so I, my faith in God and everything is, is support me and I'm, I'm happy. Um, life is more complicated than that. And I don't know why, actually, I, I do think I have some ideas, but I'm not going to share it with you, why I, in basically, in my whole life, since I left, you know, home as a boy, I, I have been involved in some way in working with inmates, with prisoners, also in the church ministry, also in, as a social worker, also as a, in, as a clinical psychotherapist. And, and, and then I ended up, uh, um, for many years ago, in the Ministry of Justice in Norway, where I spent about 12 years working in the Department of, of, of Correctional Services. Um, you know, I try to govern the Norwegian prisons, and uh, we are, like to think that we are good in most things in Norway, uh, and we are so rich. Um, so uh, we were very proud of, um, of our prison services. But I, I discovered that I had a growing concern. And, and uh, if I should be honest, I, I started to be very, very frustrated. And I had a lot of disappointments because I saw that what we were doing with all their prisons in Norway, and they are quite good. They're modern, they're human. 
it, it, it doesn't work. People didn't change. They came back into the society and continued, a lot of them continued to, to commit crime. So I left the ministry just in time before Anders uh, Bering Breivik blow the whole thing to pieces. Um, and I decided to take on a job uh, as a governor of, on that island in, in uh, the house that you're called Basta prison, which at that time just had been declared as the first human ecological prison in the world. I try to, I would come back to that, try to explain what, what uh, that is about. Uh, so, um, it, that, that, that is not from yesterday, as you can see, uh, but it's on that island. Um, so, then I do this, yes. Paradox. As I have grown older, of course, I, I have to agree that I, I do realize that there are some empty spaces up here, probably. Uh, I, 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 could, I could take in some more academic studies. I could achieve more in the universities. But I'm not so concerned about that any longer. Do you know what I'm most concerned about? I'm most concerned about what I do know. And what we do know about certain uh, issues or subjects. For instance, how prison works on human beings. I'm more concerned about all the research we already have. What worked? What doesn't work? How, how could we try to change some of them to come back to the society as taxpayers and decent persons? How could we do that? But we, we continue and talk about we should re do some more research. And, and on that island, on these prisons, this is the uh, administration building, we have people coming all over from uh, from all over the world to do their you know PhD or something. They are going to interview inmates because we need to know some who are these people. We do know about it. On the south coast of, of, of Oslo, we, we, we are having a district with a very conservative evangel evangelical Christians, and we have a saying there when we approach them about drinking wine because they are total you know uh, against alcohol. I think that probably is a good thing. And, 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 and some say to them, but what about Christ? Didn't he, you know, didn't he do this marvelous miracle, making water into wine? And they say, yes, we do know that, but we don't like it. <laughs> we do know a lot about how prisons work and doesn't work. Do we like it? Well, we, 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 we turn our back to it, and then we continue to do more of what doesn't work. In this country, in the UK, in the United States, at least, and all over Europe, we are building prisons. We run them in a traditional way. What comes out from them? My belief is, and we, we know this from research, that for a lot of people who, who represented the threat to the society and they finally uh, um, you know, committed some crimes and ended up in prison, the day they are released, they represent, represent very often a, a more threat to the local society than ever before. So what's the point with, what is the point with prison? As I, you referred to my, my quoting me, uh, I've said some in, in this interview, the only point of it is it's, it's, I have a feel of revenge. You know, I have to punish people who, who, who harm my, my local environment or community. Um, <coughs> So, do we still need prisons as punishments? I'm, uh, <laughs> particular people from USA had been visiting me for many years in, in, in that prison and said, you, you, you are, you are, something must be wrong with your way of thinking. Uh, do you really think that your prison will change anyone? Of course not. We know that a lot of the prison populations are people who have not only, they were not only uh, very unlucky with the choice of their mother, uh, <clears throat> but they also have a personal disorder. They are antisocial behavior disorders, a lot of things. In Norway, the prison population, about 60 to 65% of them have, have different kind of problems with drugs, alcohol, 
um, and, and, and uh, personal disorder diagnosis. But a lot of them could make a change if we treated them in a different way. In a, treating them with just locking them up, knowing that we have to release them one day, it doesn't help. The only way, the only the, the way I can defend prison in 2016 is that some people represent so much a threat that we have to remove them, take them away from the society to keep my, my local community safe. I accept that. Uh, I know a few of them. I wouldn't like to meet them uh, in my uh, neighborhoods. Uh, but I do know that some of them can change. And I'm going to, to share with you uh, how I think that is possible and what is happening. Um, let, let me, let me uh, refer what has already been said, that the reoffending rate in Europe, um, the um, average of, its, uh, of, of it, it's about 60 to 75 percent. In that prison, after uh, running that in the way we do some years, we were down in 16 percent. And we did not handpick the, the inmates. And they are not Sunday school children. They are the persons who have committed the most serious crime in Norway. Still, we have been able to do this. How come? Well, it may be a lot of explanations, but I like to think that the way we have developed it and the way we are now developing this in Romania must have some uh, in impact on it. Um, so... Uh, uh, So, as I said, uh, I, I still accept that we can use prison, but that the only reason is to keep the society safe and we should use the time where the inmate serve his sentence in an in a completely different way from what we do today. I don't know about uh, the, the, what they are saying in the streets in the Netherlands, but in Norway they say about people who are committing crime, send him to prison, make him, make him responsible for what he has done. I, I have worked in that system for years. I, I, I do know that this is, has, has nothing to do with the truth because what has happened when you are going to prison? The governor and his staff and the security people are taking the responsibility for you. You don't need to do anything. You're looked after. And, and, the, and, and, and the society thinks that in prison you're going to a change. Of course you're not going to a change. Not, not in ordinary prison. Not even with going into a lot of different kind of cognitive skills programs or group or therapy may be a good thing. But the missing point is that the surroundings, you know, the facilities, the, the prison cells, the whole thing which uh, represents the typical prison today, do harm to people. That's my statement, and I believe it. So, is it possible that a prison can be a change, can, can be a place for, for changing the behavior? I think so. I think so. And I see the time passing by, so now I'm, I just have to speed up. This is from Buster. Um, Buster prison uh, um, is based not only on prison rules and, and, and the re regulations, but we, it's based on, uh, on the um, existential philosophies, uh, um, um, uh, the existential uh, philosophy and the human ecological way of looking at life. So we believe that we should look at the wholeness of it. Not only your type of crime or you as a person, but the place where you are going to spend your next years. Can you look at the, that, that man on the ski? Do you see his shoes? Can you guess where, which country he, he came from? He even jumped on that ski with that shoes on, nailed to the ski. Uh, <clears throat> this is from, uh, from uh, Danu Delta. Instead of talking about the academic uh, way of explaining the theory of human ecology, I would just refer to what is supposed to have been said by the big old chief Seattle when he addressed the Congress. 
um, years ago, um, about that we are a part of something bigger. So in this prison, and we do the same down in Danube Delta, um, farming, a lot of prisons do farming, but what we do there, we run the farm, we converted the farming into the ecological way of, of farming. So inmates learn uh, some basic facts that instead of using fertilizers and, and poison to get maximum, maximum out of, of the farming, they learn to support what is. And we transfer that into the way of uh, how we deal with the rest of our society, how we relate to each other to support what is. Here in Danum Delta, they are learning to build their own houses from the ground up, using uh, material from the nature. And in the same way, the officers learn to teach them about how na the nature functions and that we are a part of it. And what we do to the nature, or our neighbor comes back to us. And this is some basic things. It's, it's not a new thing. It's, it's a basic thing. But it works. So, uh, I will now uh, take, um, present to you and share with you some what, what I, I have, I have developed a new training for prison officers and people in prisons. I have been teaching all the governors in Romania. Now I'm there going there tomorrow because we are planning to, to train a lot of psychologists and social workers in this theory. And there are some principles we use uh, when we do this. First of all, I believe that prison as punishment should only be you lose your freedom. Don't need to put your life into a, a, a place like hell, if that should exist somewhere. Uh, it could be a nice place like this. This is from a, a, a winter sports day in the prison. And we have a lot of, of animals there. And I, if I had time, I would like to share with you one of my views that the animals on that prison island, for me as a governor, was a very important part of my staff because I saw what changed, uh, saw the changes taking place in, person, in, in, in the inmates' personality when they were given the responsibility for something, for instance, for ours. So we should only focus on, you have lost your freedom, that is your punishment. So when um, people from UK, uh, USA come to this prison and say, well, this is too nice for them, they should suffer. And I say, why? I live in a democracy. I, li I live in a, in a country based on the human rights. They have got their sentence. They've lost their freedom for seven years. Shouldn't we use that time trying to create a situation where they could change? So this is that prison. And we call it a local community. There is about 60, 70 small or bigger buildings there. And we have all kinds of services there. And the inmates are quite free to move around there. And you know that people who, who got into fight with other inmates and prisoners in, in other prisons, when they are transferred to this place, they change their behavior. Is it possible? It is. And this is one of the cheapest prisons to, the, to, to run in Norway. Still, a lot of politicians do not like that because it's too soft. We are focusing on awareness of belonging. Bel focus on that you and me, being a governor or an inmate, or even being one of the uh, cows or horses, or even the flowers in the garden. We are a part of something. And we are trying to train the staff in being good at awareness, building awareness, so they are aware of what they are doing, what kind of influence they do on other persons and on the other way back. So the quality of the staff is very important. We train the staff, our prison staff in Norway, they had two years in, uh, in the academy um, for, um, for becoming prison officers. But in addition to that, we train them in these principles. And I said, if you are not able to deal with this fact that I treat you with the same respect or not more respect than I treat the inmates, you could find another place to work. So we, there we are having a, a coffee and a bonfire in, in, in the forest, and we, we are together with the inmates all the time. 
This is one of the most important uh, principles. Uh, this is from the Tataru Island down in the Danube Delta. If we fail, if we fail as prison governors or, gov or governments who are responsible for prisons, if we fail to create a place inside the prison wall which make it possible to develop a responsibility, democracy, respect, not at least, and dignity, we have failed. A um, few seconds left. Um, let me say something about respect. With all my stars and things, I, we are used to that, being police or prison governors. We say, well, you know, I'm in power here. I have the authority. You better respect me. I mean, there is a missing link there. Because I met so many people in prisons, in Russia, in Norway, in UK, all over. They don't know what respect is about. Because they don't respect themselves. Their, 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 their self-identity or self-esteem is so bad. So for me, expecting them to respect me just because they are dressed like a clown, it will never, it has failed in decades. So I, I've turned it all the way around. I, I ask my staff to make sure that the inmates are treated by respect, involve them, so they can, not all of them, but a lot of them change during their years in prison because they discover that they are human beings with the way they are met by the governor or his staff or her prison staff. If we fail there, why should we use prison? Soon finish. Focus on dynamic security. This is meant to be a metaphor. It's not only that all families have a black sheep in the family, but um, <clears throat> but in Norway, in, in Norway we have wolves and, and bears and some other wild animals threatening uh, the farmer's sheep. You know, <clears throat> and what they are doing nowadays, they receive a lot of money from the government to put up higher fences, you see, to keep the wolf away from the sheep. They spend more and more resources on it, and it doesn't work. And the wolf break through and kill the lamb, and they go to the government and say, pay me for, I've lost so and so many lamb. But they continue to do this instead of doing what they do in poor countries, like in, in, in some Afri Af African, uh, African countries, or I've seen it in Georgia where I've worked, in Caucasus, to, to rather employ um, um, shepherds to look after the sheep. The point I'm trying to make in the end here is that as more we focus on using a static security in prisons, as more money we need to spend on it and it doesn't work. We should spend more time on focusing on dynamic security. So I see you coming now. <laughs> yeah. A journalist from USA asked me, Anna, are you, are you running a holiday camp for criminals? And I said, without thinking, I said, so what? And he said, so what? And I said, yeah, so what? And I said, look at the real family rate. But on the contrary, this is not a holiday camp. This is a tough place to live. So you should know that some inmates, they ask to be transferred back into being locked up somewhere, being without any responsibility for their life and future. Uh, the man, he has stepped down from that horse. He's here today, tomorrow he is in Romania. The horse, my friend Otto, he uh, became socialist for a few years ago. So he is not any longer amongst us. But you are here, I'm here. So in the end, look around and think about, of course I have some influence on you if you didn't fall asleep. And you have some influence on me just being here. Martin Buber, you have heard about him saying, in meeting you, I become. That is a part of what I believe in and teaching in the prison system. And I think, actually, it's working. Thank you. Thank you, Arne. Thanks very much for a wonderful story. I kept you out of prison for another three minutes or so, but... Uh, a lot of respect for your approach.